I really wanted to affect students at a macro level. Um, I taught for 17 years and then I, I decided I can do more. Um, I knew that I was always going to be doing something around kids. Kids has always been my passion, especially students of color. Um, growing up in North Portland, um, living in poverty, seeing how I had to navigate the system, I felt that going into the field of education, I could work with kids and allow them to, to at least have some way of, of being able to have a platform. And then I knew that if I went into administration, I could magnify that at a bigger level. And then I knew if I went into principalship, I could really affect a lot of kids by being a leader of a, of a building. Well, they, they were tough. I mean, um, as, a, as a black male, um, I've been arrested. I've been called the N-word. I've been targeted. I've been judged just because of how I look. I had to overcome a lot of those um, pitfalls growing up. Um, and I equate that to a lot of uh, strong people around me as a, as a young black male growing up in, in North Portland. I had some good role models that I, I looked up to. Now, I'm not gonna say it was easy, it, it was very difficult, but at the same time, I felt that if I could just stay the course, that I could, I could break the cycle that I was kind of brought up in. And a, a lot of my friends didn't break that cycle, but for some reason, I, I knew that that wasn't gonna be for me. And I decided to just stay focused on education. Um, I think the last time I had an issue with the police was about 15 or 16, and after that incident I said, I'm never gonna be involved with the police again. And so I made a conscientious decision to try to lead the right path and not be, um, you know, drifting like a lot of my friends were. I believe that the current threat to equality right now is just our current atmosphere in our society. I think that there are a lot of things out there that are scary right now. Um, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go, especially now with, with social media. Um, as a person of color, I mean, I was just reading about a, a man that was arrested because he was just trying to cash his check, right? And that, that just floors me. I, I read a few months ago about the, the person that was killed in his own apartment, right? The woman went into his own apartment, thought that he was in her apartment and she shot him. And so again, just knowing that, that there is still hatred that's permeated in our society through social media at the highest level. I think the biggest step that we could take right now is, is we gotta call it as we see it. We, we gotta put it on blast. Not letting it die down. If you see it, whether it's uh, overt or not, you gotta call it as it is because I do believe that we still have a long way to go, um, especially as people of color. There's just some things that are out there in our society that, that are scary um, as, a, as a black male. and. I'm trying to really teach my boys on how to understand that and how to see it and how to be able to um, come home and not be another statistic because of something that happened with the run-in with the police or something else that happened outside of, of our house. So for me, just, just stand on point. When you see it, call it as it is.